Hello and welcome to Steinberg. My name is Stefan Schutz. Firstly, we want to link up a head mounted display or HMD. Nuendo supports the Oculus headset and through OpenVR also supports the HTC Vive headset. In Nuendo, under the projects menu, select head tracking. Set the source to HMD. Set the SDK to the device you are using. Click the tracking button to enable head tracking. The dials within the head tracking window will reflect the movement of your HMD and the movement of either the HMD or the dials will pass data onto the video player. Now we can set up the video player. Go here to download the GoPro VR player and once you have it installed on your machine, we can sync it to Nuendo 8. Launch the VR player and navigate to the preferences menu. Set the video encoding backend to Windows Media Foundation. Under the controllers menu, ensure that the HMD is unchecked. This is because we will be syncing to the HMD within Nuendo. Under the primary secondary selection, make sure that you select under communication mode, secondary. Now we can switch back to Nuendo. Under projects, GoPro VR player remote, we will add the following settings. For IP address, set the values for whichever computer you are using to run the VR player. By default, this will be the local computer. Select video file allows you to remote operate your VR player from within Nuendo and will ensure that the video file is saved to your new window project folder. Enable head tracking data. This will pass the HMD data through to the GoPro VR player. And finally, Enable Link will sync the GoPro player transport to new window 8. Now we can load 360 video files and control playback through new window. I want to go through the routing setup for VR audio production. I'm doing this very specifically because I suspect many users do exactly what I do. You run Nuendo, you set the outputs to the main outputs on your sound card and start working. So I tested the spatial panner and found it sounded wrong. With some investigation and some guidance from the Steinberg team, I discovered I had missed a critical step. So let's make sure we are all in the right place. When we create an ambisonic bus, Nuendo will want to know how we wish to route that bus to our outputs. Under the outputs tab, I have my third order ambisonics bus. I have not selected any devices for outputs for this bus. If we jump to the control room tab here, we can set the monitor outputs to the relevant headphone outputs for your setup. Essentially, we need to route the ambisonic content to a binaural headphone output so we can hear and work with our project with HMD support. I always use a single audio track with a basic sound to test all of my outputs are working as expected before I start work on any project. With spatial audio, if you do not test and calibrate your system first, then you can have all sorts of problems later on. Spatial audio can be created using a wide mix of audio formats. And in fact, from my experience and research, you often get better results by combining various formats. So ambisonic sound files, surround sound files, stereo sound files and mono sound files, they all can play a very important part of getting that final mix that has the maximum impact for your audience. To work with all these formats in a spherical spatial manner, you need to create and work with ambisonic tracks within your new Endo 8 project. Just like regular audio tracks, you can create tracks, groups, ins and out buses in ambisonic format. When working with mono, stereo, or surround sound files, you will need to route them through an ambisonic track if you want to position them in the ambisonic sphere. We're gonna to go to the outputs tab, audio connections, and add a new bus, but we will make an ambisonics bus. We now set it to the main mix to essentially format our project as an ambisonics project. Next, we create a mono track and add some content to it. I'm gonna add a nice long looping kind of sound and we can use that to test with. As we previously mentioned, we want to route this through the ambisonics bus. Now, by opening the panner, we can use the multi-panner so that we can adjust how this sound can be moved and automated within the ambisonics sphere. Headlocked refers to content that does not respond to the head tracking movement. So think traditional stereo music. You've got drum and bass on one side and guitars and vocals on the other side. So no matter how much we turn our head left or right, up or down, the perception of this never alters. If your project requires headlocked content, then you simply need to create normal mono, stereo, or surround audio content as you normally would, and then export it separately to the ambisonics mix to maintain that headlocked output. All right, so a quick word on the new panner for spatial panning in Nuendo 8. As you can see here, if I move the headset around, we can see both 
the panner there is shifting the position. And of course, the head tracking on the video is supported as well. So we see that. I can shift the sound around within the sound field and I can tilt my head to see how it functions. More importantly, to see how I'm perceiving it. Initially, I very much encourage you to play with this spatial panner a lot. And quite often I'll use just a couple of sounds and I'll put them in and I'll move my head around with headphones on and with the headset. The final step, of course, in any project is to export your sound files. You use the usual exporter window that Nuendo has always had. Uh, and in this particular case, we are selecting the third order ambisonic output. This is because we want to render out our ambisonic content in the ambisonic format. Now, it is recommended that you use just ordinary WAV file format. This is the most appropriate format to use for ambisonics. Now, what's important to understand here is that when you render out your ambisonic mix, what you will end up with is a multi-track WAV file. For you to actually hear the ambisonics functionality in your sound file, you need to use an ambisonics player to play back. Or if you combine it with a video, a 360 video, then obviously the video player needs to support the ambisonics format as well. So there are some excellent new tools that have been added to Nuendo 8. Understanding exactly how they work is important like any tool set, but it will allow you to create content for your linear and interactive spatial audio projects. And this is really, really important. New reality content is getting very, very popular and is being seen in all sorts of different genres at the moment. And the new Endo 8 toolset allows us to work in those formats and allows us to be as creative as we like. I hope that this has been helpful to you and thank you very much for watching.